I don't Richard Franklin North. Really? Increase some interest. I remember he ran for uh, oh, yeah. county commissioner against Ron Davis. Right. Oh, that's right. But what did you say? Oh, <laughs> Richard Franklin, yeah. George Morales right. is the reason he's doing so much in the community is because he's looking at our running against uh, Maria Cancelo for peace. Oh, oh the, the uh, what's his face? By Sarah's assistant? Uh-huh. Yeah, he's like above Sarah's number two. Right. The chief chief uh, deputy oh, or something. Okay, okay. I don't know, we've got time for it. Won't be Maria. I wouldn't think she so. She won't be Maria. Maria's embedded already. Yeah, she's a long-term party oh, player. Oh, yeah. She got that seat as a reward. It's like Margaret Gomez is. They're going to be there until. Democrat. He goes, all right. Okay. Here we are. There we are. Uh, all right. We're, uh, we're glad to have James Dickey here, sir. You see he's coming on. Hey, My pleasure. I'm not asking for the computer yet. Well, did I ask for the computer yet? Okay. We'll have one little announcement about Dust Springs Fire, but it'll come up later. We'll start with uh, Mr. Dickey here. Will, Will, go ahead and tell us about yourself. We'll start with that. All right. Well, I'm, uh, <laughs> I am not a native Texan. We got here as quick as I could. Not did, New York, uh, No, no, no. Uh, but okay. did uh, junior high and high school in Fort Worth, and then went, uh, then went to California and did college, and my wife and I lived all over the country. I met her out there, and then... We got back to Dal the Dallas area in 92 and have been back in Texas ever since. I did my undergrad at uh, Stanford and uh, got an MBA from Baylor. Oh, wow. And uh, I've uh, been working in the Austin area. I started a company with a friend of mine in, in, out in Lakeway in 2009. And I've been working in the Austin area ever since and started <coughs> to get involved politically down here. And, now uh, am set to hopefully get elected to be chair of the Travis County Republican Party. Well, you got you're running out of polls, so yeah. So as long as somebody votes for me, I win. So uh, <laughs> you gotta get at least one. You gotta get at least one. Uh, yeah, you gotta get at least uh, one. As long as I get one, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll be okay. That should be easy. It's uh, you know Rosemary's been on the show several times. She was a damn good chair. She has been a great chair, and and from everything I heard, it was before I'd gotten here. But from everything I'd what? heard things had been really tough in the Republican Party there for a while, and well, that transition was tough. We changed a lot since the Sager days, but I take it as we were much smaller back then. The county was smaller, the city was smaller, Yep. and the party was a lot smaller. Well, and from what I hear, there were there were some more factions and, and frustration within the party, and I've seen a lot less of that in the last couple of years. And, Holy cow. And so I feel... I, I feel better. I feel like Rosemary's really handed me a, a much better situation. Now my job will be to not screw it up. Not drive it off a cliff? Yeah. Well, I know uh, Mike Cargill here has uh, been pretty active. I know he's, uh, uh -huh. I like the way he thinks about it. You know, one of our things is the Libertarian Party, Ron Paul Libertarians, and how they will go off from, they want to, what is it called, vote their principles. And so they won't, uh, vote for Republicans, and I know besides Mike, uh, uh, Dave Valley also tries to tell them to stick with the party. And I know that's good. I, I don't know how you're going to handle all that because you know about last, the last cycle, yep. out there in the parking garage arguing, arguing things. I was out there. Yeah. <laughs> I called it the coup, <laughs> <laughs> the Rob Paul coup. So well, what interested you to take this, this, this sounding position at this time? Well. Uh, the no, so I, said challenging. Yeah, it, it is a challenging position, and I mean the Republican Party has a lot to do in Travis County. We got a, a pretty big goal. I mean we're down 60-40 pretty much, and as the population keeps growing, that ratio either hasn't changed or is changing against us, and and so there's a lot of work we need to do. But the real reason that I got asked that, why in the world would you want this position, right? <laughs> so in case anybody's wondering, the position is not paid. <laughs> um, and it is challenging. The numbers are against you. Uh, the reason why I want this is because I think I can make a difference. I think I can help the Republican Party. I, I know for a fact that the principles we have, if implemented, if we'll just do, what, if, if in an area we can do what Republicans know need to be done and actually do it, mm -hmm. that everyone is better off. And uh, how could I sleep at night if I didn't do what I could do to help everybody be better off? I know that at the, uh, at the national uh, level, there was, uh, from the Republican Party, there's two different perspectives. 
uh, given this last presidential election. One is we need to do more outreach. Yep. You know, and then the other is no, let's just concentrate on increasing our our base to come out and vote. Given those two uh, approaches, which do you find yourself? Well, I, yeah, I, I actually think it's a that's a false choice. I think if you if you express the principles right, mm -hmm. that you do both. You both excite the the base that has been around, and you attract more people. I mean, I, I'm a firm believer. Nobody nobody cares what you know until they know that you care. So, and. And it is a little harder when we're expressing when we're expressing conservative <coughs> principles, mm -hmm. and we're saying we're saying we know you can do it. We know you can do better. It's pretty easy for someone who's opposed to us to twist that around and say, "Well, what they mean is you're on your own, and good luck." And you know, they they've thrown you in the water, and they're waiting for you to swim. Mm -hmm. And and so it takes it absolutely takes effort to A, build relationships, which you have to do, and you should do, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we want to do that. We want to build those relationships. But to, but to make the point, no, this is not about, you know, hoping you can swim. This is about, this is about knowing that you are better than you, than you even realize, and that you can accomplish more than you will if you're shackled <coughs> or if you're pinned or if you're stuck, right? And that's why we care. That's why I care so much about things like school choice and about um, a, a, a real liberty environment, right? Mm -hmm. It's not about everybody being. It's not about just saying no one needs government. It's that when we try and help, we we absolutely need to help. But you have to be very careful that the more you help, you aren't you aren't just enabling somebody. I mean, everybody's got a family member that they know would be a little better off if every once in a while, you know, they they got encouragement to do things differently. Uh, and, and that's well, a hard. Mike's shaking his head over there. He wants to say yeah, something. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, we're good. I'm right. like I'm like in everything I hear. I'm like, <laughs> uh, we need to sell ourselves better, and we would increase not only our base but our outreach. Yeah, and, and it's not just about selling people. We really do need to build more relationships. We need to get right? out on the street. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And it's and that's a tough message because that's not easy, right? And and it's a little scary, right? Uh, I, I had I had a big pleasure uh, about four months ago. I the party has been wanting to build relationships, right? And so we signed up a membership with the Greater Austin Area Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And so I Finally? asked. Finally, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, and and you, the first reaction is, well, shoot, we should have done that a long time ago. <laughs> but but you know, okay, better late than never. And I got to go, and I went to the event, and you know, I just I, I showed up, and and people would say, hey, you know, I'm I'm here, I own this company, you know, nice to meet you. And I'd say, well, I'm I'm here, and I'm representing the the Travis County Republican Party, and we've just joined up. And I can't tell you how many people went, holy smokes, thanks for showing, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, welcome, <clears throat> where you been, right? Oh yeah, many, all people like Benjamin Franklin, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. more of those that come along, you know. <laughs> well, it, 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 was, it was a fantastic welcome, and, it, and it, step one is just plain making the effort, yeah. right? But it is a little scary. And for people, we've got a lot of, we actually have a couple hundred thousand Republicans in Travis County, right? If you look at the general election and those who vote Republican in the last presidential election, we got a couple hundred, you know, going on a quarter million Republicans. But it's a lot easier for everybody to get in the group they're comfortable with right. and stay in the group they're comfortable with. We, we just need a lot of people willing to make the effort and step a little out of their comfort level and, and make some new relationships so we can grow. I agree. And they might find they're quite comfortable out there in that new Exactly. It, it, the relationships you can build are a lot of fun. And at the end of the day, that's what life is do you about. Hope for, right? Well, do you hope for a, a larger turnout in November for especially at the district for the fish, District 50 race? Yes, absolutely. I, I hope for a larger turnout for the District 50 race. It, uh, you know, we, we had a a string of unfortunate things happen in the HD50 race. 
the weather turning against us on Friday and on Tuesday, I think that made a material difference, and I wish it had not. Now, at the end of the day, you know, Celia Israel, you know, to her credit, she won the election. But even with the help of Battleground Texas, and even as Organized experienced, even as experienced a an Austin area organizer as she is, mm -hmm. um, she pulled roughly what the district was drawn to pull. You know, she didn't dramatically over pull what she should have, right? And so, and Dr. Mike, who's a great guy and who I think would be a fantastic representative for the area, is a businessman who this is his very first race, didn't have an organized structure, didn't have, you know, a, a national organization with, you know, President Obama's own fantastic campaign workers working on it. And he pulled about what, he, what you would expect a Republican to pull in that area. So to his credit, he did a good job. We absolutely need to know, do a lot better. I'm convinced that the weather had been better. We might have seen we might have seen something very Extra different. Extra percentage point or two at least. Well, like at least say, a few, this right? Just, it, uh, yeah, you would have seen one, right? This yeah. Was just round one. yeah, this was just right. round one. Much more can happen. Uh, I think it. I think it'd be good. What I really hope for is I hope that we have a great turnout in just what five weeks with uh, the Republican Congress? primary, February and I, I hope that. I hope, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Early mm -hmm. voting's mm -hmm. in just a couple of weeks, right? Wow. Uh, yeah, I know it's scary. Wow. Uh, Already. But I hope that uh, I hope that we have a lot of well-informed Republican voters turning out to vote, and that's up to the party, right? To make sure that <coughs> that in that primary that we end up at the end of that primary with great candidates who build relationships who present our case in a way that really is compelling and really shows people that we want everybody drawn in. I, th I think, you know, what the Republican Party in Travis County should do, which I think we're going in that direction, is actually, I, I actually take the time to like sit down and talk to people, like say, you know, in a bar or something and we start talking politics. I was sitting there talking to this one guy. Or church. Or church. <laughs> or church. Last week, I was talking <laughs> or church. Last week, I was sitting down talking to a, a young man. Well, and, different churches. And I, asked, <laughs> and I asked him, you know, where, you know, where does he lean when it comes to voting? You know, and he said, well, his family leaned, you know, more toward the Democrat Party. I said, okay, well, you know, tell me what are some of the things that interest you? What are some of the things you're concerned about? And I started asking him, what do you do for a living? You know, what is, you know, what are some of the things that concern, you know, concern you here in the area in Austin? And the more we got to talking, I said, oh, wow, that's conservative value. Keep going. <laughs> oh, wow, that's conservative also. Keep going. Oh, that's conservative also. Keep going. And, you know, and I said, wow, so you really, you know, you say you lean Democrat, but it really, when I listen to you, you actually sound like a Republican. Can I freeze you right there a minute? Sure, go for it. Well, the computer's down, but we were going to mix it about the big fire out in Dust Springs. Maybe some of y'all seen it. They're out there now trying to get food and some clothing for uh, uh, what, 40, 50 people who are homeless. And there's people out there moving furniture around. They're, they're getting them into bread crosses out there. You can email to area78744 at gmail.com, and they will respond and tell you what they need. Uh, Please read your Robert just he texted me and said he's still out there feeding people right now. If y'all know what this is, staff in 35. If we had to... Man, it was a big giant play. I mean, it was uh, pretty devastating. We need cleaning supplies tomorrow. I will be at the office at 0830. That's the, uh, the name of the damn apartments now. Stasty Woods. It's right there at, at Stasty and 35. If anybody wants to go out there and help, just pull into the office, and they'll uh, tell you what you can do, or you can email that email that's, address I just gave you. across the highway from uh, Fiesta yep. and... Uh, same right, side as at uh, 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 north northeast corner. That's those apartments right there, and you can just pull right in, and they'll they'll. Uh, I had a whole bunch of. Uh, you can go to James Ritter on Facebook, and uh, see some of it. You can see the, it was a big fire. Uh, KVU, uh, what, what, their downtown camera, you could see it. It was shooting flames way high. Mm. They don't know. They say maybe a grease. Grease fire started it. No, when it comes when it comes to the food and stuff, who's doing the cooking of the food? I think they're taking. Uh, uh, text me back there, Robert. <laughs> yeah, let us know who's doing the cooking, cause um, I actually have some um, some hams 
that well, we could delicious hams. Yeah, that we could donate. They were delicious. Right. So I, I'm not sure how many I have. I may have like a dozen or so. I'm not sure. But if you let me know who's doing the cooking, you know, I'll see what we can do over at Central Texas Gunworks. Uh, yeah, because you were real helpful at the floods in Dust Springs as well, uh, which was really, really good. Go ahead with what you're saying. I'll, I'll be right back here with you. Yeah, so um, a little more of that outreach, just sitting down and talking to people and letting them know, you know, just just asking them, really, you know, what are some of the things they're concerned about, you know, like right another topic is uh, traffic on I-35. You know, I started talking about that. And I'll ask people, you know, well, what do you think, you know, could be the fix to it? You know, what do you think are some of the problems? You know, what people will say, some of the problems on that traffic, you know, going through I-35 there on in Austin is um, we're not putting the money where we need to here in Travis County. I sat through a little meeting on Saturday at the Millennium Center with the Austin Police Department and some other organizations where they talked about how they're going to add bike lanes around Travis County and Austin. And they sat down and they talked about how much it actually costs, mm. you know, for the bike lanes and where they're going to put the bike lanes. And the fact that, you know, depending on where the bank, where the lane is actually being built, you know, it could be, um, I'm sorry, $2 million for one mile to I build a bike lane. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Two, let me say that's, that again. Two million dollars for one amazing. mile. You're right, and that's just one one particular case. There are other situations where it would be even more for one mile to build that bike lane. You know, per mile. Mm. And so, <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, and to me, you know, that's just crazy. You know, why are we putting some of that money into um, doing something about relieving traffic off I-35? You know, and that, those are, you know, you, when you sit down and you talk to people about those sort of things, you know, I think they will come around because the problem is we're putting the same people in Travis County and Austin into office again. So for the last 10, 15, 20 years, we're putting the same people back into office. So if I'm going, you know, we're going back to the polls, reelecting these same people, the same city council, the same mayor, you know, into office over and over again, every election. You know, when they say you do something, you know, over and over again and, you know, you're getting the same results, but you really expect something different, you know, what do they call that? Insanity. Insanity. Just checking. Yeah. Well, I, I, I am hopeful that the 10-1 and the, the change in the makeup of the city council and the mayor's race and all of that will give us a chance to actually see a substantial change. How long I have hope been so. in Austin? About four years. Okay. Uh, I thought you'd been here a little longer than that. I guess in Texas you have, but not Yeah, now. yeah. I've been, I've been in Texas for over 20, but. Uh, you mentioned 10 1. How many of the 10 1 up north or the w northwest area do you think will be filled by a Republican? Uh, it depends. I think there are. I think there are probably three races that are that are likely well, to be held by Republicans. So well, it's not, it's not like heard, there'll be a. Have you heard of any that already in, in made any? Uh, I I know knocks. several who are considering, considering running, race. and there are a couple I know who declared a while ago, uh, and we'll see how all that works out. But so even at that, right? Let's say best case, there are three spots that are yeah. Republican. So it's not like, you know, all of a sudden Republicans are going to take over yeah. city council. Yeah. My hope with Not that, out. yeah, no. <laughs> my, my hope with that is just that by having two or three city council members yeah. who are truly conservative, and, and frankly, I mean, that's, that's more my concern, right? I, I, I believe the Republican message resonates best and the Republican brand works best and the relationships are built best when we actually act like conservatives, right? So if we have conservative Republicans who are in two or three of those seats, they're not going to they're not going to have or be the majority but they will have a chance to make sure that the conservative slant the conservative opinion the conservative view <coughs> and take on it yeah the conservative voice at least gets mentioned and we're right now i mean on the city council it's it's really not there is no conservative voice I mean, uh, on the county commissioners, you know, Gerald Doherty is the, the lone yeah, voice got, for conservatism. He's got people running against him this time. He does. He has people running against him. And, oh, really? and he has a tough. Please read the new text message. 
<laughs> you got He's telling me about the ham. Exactly. Yeah, let's find out. It was a big out. fire. Yeah. And yeah. this is important. So we Duck, Duck Springs is, uh, we, can, we can use them. I told you you had 30. I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure how many. So I don't want to say, I don't want to say I have yeah. 30 hams because I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure if I have that many. So those, yeah, don't t tell them I don't know how many I actually have. Well, you were saying 40 or 50, I thought. No, 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 no. I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. You're jumping the gun. Huh? Yeah, yeah, tell them I don't have a number. Tell them I don't have a number. I don't know. Um, I just have call me when I get off. Yeah. Yep. Good. Well, the... So I think, you know, it, even though he's only one out of five, just having his voice there and having the position be at least raised, the question at least yeah. asked. He does raise it. It he does, does raise it. Right. It does make a difference. Yeah. And not only that, but I think the people of Austin, the people of, the, of Travis County really need to see and they need a chance to see and hear a different viewpoint. I mean, we talk about keeping Austin weird. You know, how weird can you be when you, when you hear exactly one viewpoint all the time, right? If the city council is all already arguing over how much do we spend and not whether we should at all, or how much do we put into light rail, or how much do we do on these bike lanes, and the question is never even asked, should you? Anytime, right, because we're... Any, no, go ahead. No. I was going to say, from a financial uh, contributions to you what you're saying whenever there's a surplus in the city it's not how much we're going to give back to the taxpayers yep. it's now we got money to spend on, you know, yeah, some exactly. other weirdo project. yeah isn't this great we can do something else because yeah. i know uh it's i don't know if it was round rock or some of those small communities that actually gave the taxpayers return uh, taxpayers money. oh wow Oh, wow. Yeah, wouldn't that yeah. be a surprise? And, and we need to see more of that. Frankly, we need to see some more of that at the state level. Well, we, the reason I asked you that question is because I attended a, uh, you know, KLB, was not it, uh, KLRU, yeah. the University of Texas. They, uh, Anita Strauss. Uh, yeah, they have forums or discussions, right. and they did have one on 10-1, and they had a panelist, and the city of Austin, the demographer, was one of the panelists. And uh, a lot of the audience, the majority, I, I would say, were, uh, let's say, moderate to liberal, more liberal. Sure. But one of the comments that he made that really surprised me as uh, coming from a public employee was that uh, his comment was that the biggest fear people had uh, was that a Republican would be elected. <laughs> and say, well, wait a minute. <laughs> exactly. And, the, and, and that is sad. <laughs> and, if, and if you think about it, right, 40% of the county is actually, and 40% of the residents of the city are actually Republican or vote Republican in presidential mm -hmm. elections. If there are 10 districts and, and I'm hoping three of them go Republican, it's not representative, right? And that's okay. I, I'm, I'm not a fan right. of, I'm not a fan of setting up quotas and saying right. we got to get our, you know, we got to get our 40% to be fair. That, what, I think if we are able to yeah. argue, if we're able to present our ideas well, we'll win a fair share. I, mean, I, tell you, I guess my, my interpretation of his comment was that having one there would contribute negatively. Oh, yeah. And, and that's why I said, wait a minute, now you're a public well, employee. You can't be. He, <laughs> yeah, well, biased, you he, know. he shouldn't be thinking that, but he is. And part of the reason why he is is because there hasn't been a Republican no, voice. Yeah. And, and that's where I think the real power of having two or three members out there will oh, just yeah. be having that voice, right? Having that consistent piece out there to, to let people know, oh, yeah, actually, you know, Turns out I am conservative. Right. I, hadn't, I hadn't thought about that, but yeah, actually, I, I agree with this guy. He's not. He's not scary. I was um, going to say something like a lot of these people are more conservative than they know. Right. Yeah. Well, well, that's the funny thing. No matter where you are, and I've lived all over the country, most people live conservatively, right? How many parents do you know? Well, we live conservatively, who, not by choice. Well, uh, regardless, how, how many people, people you know? say conserve energy, not by choice. Yeah. Right. Well, <laughs> that's what I was going to say. I was recycling when we, recycling wasn't we, cool. We, and it was they they <laughs> use public transportation, not by choice. Right. I mean, when I was growing up, I mean, bikes was, were our means of transportation. And there wasn't no helmets now, Nowadays, yeah. it's a, like a fat, you know. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's how you so got around. Where did uh, I, I forgot, I'm getting like... Uh, Tokyo in our memory loss here. <laughs> where did you say you, you came from? Uh, or did you, well, I'm, you I'm, ra race where? Uh, in Fort Worth. Fort Worth. Oh, so you're a Texan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I, I was actually, <coughs> I was born in California and we lived California so, and Tucson. 
No. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I actually am. Uh, 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 that is actually something I want to work on. Uh, in my business, we have a lot of clients who are Hispanic, and it's and uh, it's it's been it's, uh, it's been great, and we've got a good base. And I would I would like to be able better to communicate with them. So, uh, I so mean, I'll do that. But I like Spanish that. Is good for business. I like that oh, yeah. being a choice thing, and I'm, I'm you know I choose to head that direction. Well, uh, I'm like a, I don't know. We have a LULAC, you know. We want to thank the party for donating the first thousand dollars for our education summit that we're planning to have in East Austin. Our pleasure. And uh, we hope that those one thousand dollars will leverage more. <laughs> we're, 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 yeah, we're going to need uh, quite a bit uh, uh, assistance there for uh, for that one day, one one, one day. Well, I'm evening. very glad you're doing that education summit there. There is, I'm a firm believer, I know the magnet school I was able to go to in 10th, 11th, 12th grade, it changed my life. And I would not have been able to go to the college I went to if I had not been able to go there. So um, I, I know what it's like to, to need school choice. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about that for just a second? Can we what, talk about choice? that? Uh, our uh, uh, education summit thing? Oh, no. What? No, I don't man. Uh, no, I was, well, we I was saying, August, I, was right? saying I, was, I was mentioning immigration. Oh, well, we can talk about, well, I don't know how much <laughs> that has to do with the county. Oh, but you know they're going to be attacking my sheriff well, now. Or not immigration necessarily, but driver's well, license. Weren't, weren't some people, speaking of immigration, weren't some people being, t uh, yeah. any people tied themselves up? They're going to be attacking county, the sheriff again. Travis County right. Jail? The only Democrat I vote for. Something about Travis County Jail, I heard it yesterday, I, I saw it somewhere. People handcuffed themselves or tied themselves up to yeah. prevent them from hauling people away. That, that would be an arrest for immigration. Jail, the sheriff said there's nothing, there's nothing he's doing wrong. Mm -hmm. Well, but see, that's preventable, though. That's the what? It's preventable. How what, is that preventable? What's preventable? If you don't go to jail, oh, you, know, yeah, you don't get you deported. Go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you don't want to get deported? Don't be out don't there car dragging or... Nope, if you or? know that you're gonna, if you go to jail, you're gonna get deported. Why go to jail? Oh, read your you know. Text yeah. Hey, hopefully, you're more motivated not to go to jail. Well, I'm, well, uh -huh. I, I was gonna say, I'm, you know, so you can't be blaming no authority that has to adhere to the law. Yeah. You know. Well, there was a lot of Republicans trying to uh, come to the support of the sheriff. Because he wouldn't do anything wrong. And, uh, and LULAC supports the sheriff. And LULAC, and LULAC lots, a lot of Democrats did too, but they were. Because again, you know, if you know you're gonna, if you, if you know you're gonna go to jail and get deported, why go to jail? Right. Don't do what it's, whatever it you is know, you're doing. It's get you to jail. That. That's not real hard to understand. I, I think you know. I don't think so either. Now there's people that do want to go back. You know, well, and find are, that way. Uh, that is a way to go home. There party. are people in the Democrat Party that are, are just, they don't understand that concept at all. Mm. And as you know, some of them, we won't mention her name, uh, but she's running for a certain office and right. she uh, attacked the sheriff pretty well, viciously. you know, who's that? Sheriff Eckhart. Oh. Well, you know that. I didn't um, want to mention her name, but. Yeah. <laughs> the, well, the, the great, the beautiful thing about it is, you know, we're in America and everybody has the, the, the right to voice it's, their opinion. It's a republic. And everybody's got Especially gotta, when it's uh, an elected official's decision, you know. And that's fine. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, I think that, uh, you know, the sheriff's been done a real good job, has many programs that reach out to the community. He has. And uh, this one issue is something that he has no control over. And he's getting. Yet people are, are using anymore. him, you know, using him to forward another agenda. Yeah, you know, for sure. You know, why, why don't. Uh, you know what, like, well, anyway, I'll leave it at that. Yeah, we'll leave it at that because uh, I know a lot of people on both parties have supported the sheriff. He's done, I don't, I don't know how familiar you are with him. I know you are. He's not been bad at all. Okay, uh, he's a Democrat, but besides that, <laughs> we haven't really really run anybody. Raymond, Raymond Franks, I think, but. He's still on the ballot. I saw yeah, him he's on still the on there for something I, again. I thought he, he was up there with the Lord. He's getting older now. <laughs> Is he one of us? Or he's one of you. He's one of us. He's one of us to you, right? Yeah, oh, he's been uh, <laughs> <laughs> something. 
I'm how old he is now, but <laughs> he's he was old when I knew him. I was young. Uh, <laughs> you say you thought he was up there with the Lord. <laughs> That was funny. I don't know that if you good. ever met Raymond Frank or not. <laughs> I have not yet had the pleasure. Uh, well, he's on your party ticket. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's a good Republican, all right? Now, I got a couple questions. Um, the What is it, the Turn Texas Blue? Is that what it is? Battleground Texas. Battle, Battle Battle Texas. Texas. Okay, what are, you, what are your thoughts on that and what they're doing and how they're going about what they're doing? Well, the... And, what do you, and also, what do you think about the, um, the effect that... What's her name? Uh, Wendy Davis? is yeah. going to have on this upcoming election? Well, uh, those, are, those are a couple of big questions. The, <laughs> the organization Battleground Texas, I think, is a credible threat that we should take seriously. Right? Agreed. So they have, they have raised a good amount of money, they have good talent, and they are following the playbook. They are getting people to be deputy voter registrars, they're getting those people to register voters, they're getting those people to work on turning out the votes, they're getting those people to, to phone bank. They Black are, everything. The, yeah, they, they absolutely are doing the right things they need to do to grow the Democrat base in Texas. And that's something we should not take lightly, and it's something we should we, we cannot afford to be complacent about the Republican lead in Texas. Thank you. We absolutely cannot. And that's why I'm a big advocate for, and you know, I helped in the HD50 race. It didn't turn the race, but I worked to help do phone banking, and I worked to help do block walking, and I know a lot, I encouraged everyone else I knew to do the same thing. That it is, um, it is work. But it's critical work. It's work we absolutely have to do. So I think Battleground Texas is something we absolutely have to take seriously and we have to work against. And as for Wendy Davis, if she, if she significantly improves her game, she will, she will have some down-ballot improve, improvement. I don't think that there's a significant risk that she'll beat Abbott for governor. I do think there is a risk that she will excite the base just enough, the Democrat base just enough, uh, that they'll manage to swing some swingable races down lower on the ballot. And th I think that's something <coughs> we have to take very seriously, especially here in Travis County. Okay. So far, though, her... Gerald's not up, is he? Pardon? Gerald's not up, is he? No. Okay. No. He's, um, uh, but there are... Uh, but there are some other races other that races. are, uh, you know, Justice of the Peace Precinct 2, for example. Oh, I think okay. that's, a, that's a race where a, a big difference in turnout could swing oh, that. Oh, yeah. Especially now that it's been redrawn, mm -hmm. right? So um, th I think that's a race that, oh, no, that could be a concern. Stato's had a good yeah, couple and of rounds there at the commission. Judge Bass is a, is a spectacular oh, really? oh, judge. Yeah. Who's done a, I mean, he's done an amazing job getting <clears> rid of backlog making sure people get their hearings faster, making sure justice is truly served and done so quickly and DP. efficiently. I mean, he really, he really serves the people of that, that district exactly the way they deserve to be served. And it's, it's fantastic to watch. And, and that, I, the people of that district really need to have him still be their justice and, of the peace. So I would, I would hate to see that swing things, but so far our Wendy Davis campaign has been not really that well run, and I'm I'm hoping as as someone who's who <coughs> wants the other side to win, I hope that race continues to be run. I, I hope that campaign continues to be run that bad. Can I throw something in here real quick? I I said on the time of Facebook, the Battleground Texas, they're young, they're intelligent, they're dedicated, uh, they're committed, they work hard all day every day, and they got one goal in mind. And I'm definitely thinking that we should be. Uh, we don't seem to run much against them. Well, with the outreach we've got, David Zapata and two or three others for Hispanic outreach, one African American outreach, and one on the state level. I know it's done on the county level, and I don't know why they do that. Why don't we just get serious and put some? We're supposed to be the party of the rich. How come we're so broke all the time? Well, actually, that's a, that's a really good question. That's one of the things I've been I have been trying to think about and trying to get good input on. One of the things that's frustrating, as the party who believes that uh, the people's money is best left with the people and not <coughs> taken by government, mm -hmm. it's very hard for us to 
have money to have full time resources to work on promoting our ideas where the party that is a big fan of unions has a lot of full time uh, we just found out today the the f a a pays one hundred and sixty four thousand dollars a year plus benefits to a guy whose whole job is to work for the union that runs the f the f a a work how do i get one of them kind of jobs so so we the taxpayer are paying over two hundred thousand a year for a guy to work to try to demand more money from us the back taxpayer Mm -hmm. Right? So it's frustrating because there are full time paid jobs Texas for the people who want to grow government. We have to find a way to use capitalism in our favor to, to have full time <clears throat> dedicated paid people working to spread freedom and small government. And that's a hard thing to do because, of you know, on the, on the opposite side, it's really easy, right? If you want to grow government, there are government jobs, there are union jobs, there are all sorts of great jobs you, you can job get. You job of $160,000 a year, I'll look for you. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, there, there are all sorts of jobs that you can get that will pay you full time to grow the, the theology of more government. We need to find a way to do it on the opposite end. And it's not an easy, it's not an easy place. But we, it, it's funny, we're the, cap, we're the ones in f that know capitalism works and spreads and grows and is the best long-term solution. But we do politics nonprofit. And the opposition that keeps telling us capitalism is bad does politics <coughs> for money. And, and you know, why are they winning? Because they got full-time paid people. So the majority of your uh, Republican uh, members in Travis County are Northwest, Lakeway, uh, uh, I know they're Rogue Yeah, well, Abbey yeah, and, it's, uh, there are uh, the biggest concentrations right. are West and Northwest, North yes. Northwest. Those are the biggest concentrations. But like I said, we've got a quarter million well, people in Travis that, County, I and mean, it's not it, a small well, number. In East Austin, where, where I'm the Democratic precinct chair, we have a young man, uh, Timmy. Tim or Timmy? Tim. Tim. Tim Liner? Liner, he's oh. the precinct chair for 439. He's a good guy. Tim's a great guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, you know, you're gradually. Well, see, that's the first uh, Republican precinct chair that we've and had. And he's often. And you've had a long, long time. A long, long time. We always get substitutes, Democrat substitutes to fill those roles. Yeah. So. Uh, and that, like I said, you know, when we started this out, step one, relationships, right? We go, we've got to build the relationships where people are. And we do have. We do have conservatives all yeah. over the county. Uh, as Lulac, I can do this. I'll, uh, maybe sometime in the near future, I can set up a, a gathering of people that I know in East Austin that are diehard Republicans uh, and have you come down and chit chat with them. I would love over that. Over coffee or whatever. Uh, that would be surprising how many there are. Yeah, you'd yeah. be surprised. I was surprised. Well, that. uh, that's the thing. I wouldn't be surprised. I'd be excited to, get, to try to <laughs> like add Michael some organizations. You know, but if actually, if anyone's conservative, you can't find a person more conservative than conservative Latino, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. by religion mo, mo, as well because of religion. The right abortion, to life. Yep. Uh, it's an issue. They're all businessmen. See, and yeah. I, th I think when it comes to the Wendy Davis effect, I think that's going to backfire on the Democrats because I think your Catholics are going to stay home, you know, because you're asking them, you know, to vote for, you know, Abortion on, on demand. Abortion. Unlimited. Exactly. Anytime. Abortion on demand, you know, and that's that goes against the Catholic, you know, upbringing. So well, I think... We haven't I, touched on your topic. What's your position on gun control? <laughs> on guns. My position on gun control? <laughs> oh, guns. Two yeah. hands. Uh, <laughs> what, what, was that, what was that other, the ID back, back the issue? Uh, the um, background check? Oh, for the county at the, the gun show? No, no. Uni the, universal background checks? Universal checks? background checks. Yeah, I, um, I don't know how much that would have to do with the county, but your personal opinion, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, the the I think the Second Amendment uh, Second Amendment is amazingly clear, right? The right right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Seems obvious. Right. So uh, so frankly, you know, whether it's whether it's concealed carry, which is fine, open carry. Um, you know the. With the, be the best defense against a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun, All right? And, and I, the, I have a lot of respect for most police officers in most situations. The, the, for 
for ninety percent of them they're doing a tough job and doing it very well every day with very little things right so kudos to them but in most situations especially in some parts of town when seconds count you know help is minutes away and, and, and so god forbid you're on you're on west campus mm. and you dial 911 true story and you're asking for the police to come and save you because you're a young lady and someone is sexually assaulting you or just finished sexually assaulting you and then they route they can't figure out how to route that 911 call they can't figure out if we're going to route it to apd or utpd apd or utpd yeah. <coughs> well, true story and, and that's why i mean it's the police do the best they can with a very tough job but we can't expect them to be everywhere all the time. We, we really have to protect the ones you love, yourself and the ones you love, yourself. You really have to do that. Um, so, yeah. That's Your governor came out saying he wanted it. We got to go to Mayor Water. Yeah. Mayor um, Water, yeah. yeah. Your governor. Maybe that's why he couldn't remember what programs he was going to cut. Wow, I think you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna do your best to get me on the record on pretty much every controversial <laughs> issue there. Could be, right? uh, before we do, you you will be taking over not November but what January or no? It's June. The well that so that's expected. The way the way the law is written, um, the county chair changes hand 60 days after the either the primary or if there is one the runoff okay so there we're expecting there will be a runoff in at least one of the state races so there will be a runoff and therefore I'm well we are trying to use so somewhat softball so that you do want to come back on again <laughs> i mean we did get rosemary on here several times good but yeah the marijuana is a growing controversy and it is, it is. A, a local issue Oh, Lord. It is. The idiots in Denver, they're lined up at, at, at 6, 7 o'clock in the morning on Tuesday. Don't any of have people over jobs? <laughs> what happened um, to uh, Puff Puff Pass on Saturday night? And there, there might be a high correlation between customers there and people who don't have a job. You never know. Well, that's but, the first thing that got me <laughs> is that it showed us on the news after it happened, and they're all up there lined up to get, job, uh, to get weed uh, Tuesday morning. Well, okay, so the first, the first stance on this is, I think, the easiest. As Republicans, we firmly believe in the Constitution. The Constitution is pretty crystal clear about the responsibilities of the federal government. And then the Tenth Amendment says, all other things not delegated to the federal government are left to the states and the people. Okay? Then as conservatives, it should be up to the state. A end of story. So you're not gonna say uh, we should not, no, no, no. Well, so our very first, our very first stance on this should be, the federal laws that that make that take away the freedom of choice on all this stuff from the states are inappropriate, <coughs> should never have been enacted, and those should be gone. And then a state like Washington, a state like Colorado, great, right they, ahead, pass, huh? they pass it, God bless them, right? We shall see. I mean, one of the benefits of federalism is we'll see. Not now, we, we don't know, right? So we do know. That, you know, generally speaking, people who, who partake in a lot of marijuana over long periods of time are probably not quite as productive as people who don't. Okay? I would agree. So, let's have an experiment, right? We've got 50 states. We've got a couple of states who wanted to pass it. Let's see what happens to their economy. Let's see what happens to their medical costs. Let's see what happens. Let, let's see. And if the people of Texas, you know, liberty-loving, God-fearing people they are, if, the, if and it's both, right? Liberty loving and God fearing. If the people of Texas say, you know what, we, we as a society, we want to say what's right and what's wrong, and we've decided that, you know, crystal meth is wrong and heroin, given what happened yesterday, right, is wrong. What happened yesterday? Philip Seymour Hoffman. Uh, oh, that actor I never heard of. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's no, a whole he was other a, story. He was a very talented actor who uh, died at 46 and left three kids an orphan uh, with a needle in his arm because he was addicted to heroin. Right? Wow. So, if, so if the people of Texas say, look, these are wrong, these are wrong, these are wrong, but you know what? We've decided this is not bad. Okay. And so we're going to allow this to happen. Well, then let's now, see what happens. Now, will that carry over to employment, i.e., Truck drivers. When you go take a, when you go for a job, 
I think it's going to be, let's say, a clerk at ATB, well, for example. We're in employment at Will State, right? Yeah. You can, uh, the, right the, state, the yeah. reality is, uh, it's at will. Mm -hmm. the, the reality is you can lose your job at any time for any reason, right? Right. Uh, unless you're in a union, you've got some rules about when you can lose your job or not, right? Or unless you've got some contract that says when you can or cannot. Other than that, it's at will. So as far as I'm concerned, that would be, if it were legal, that, then that would be up to each employer. Right. I know we'd have to think very long and hard at our company whether we would be doing drug tests, whether or not we would have a problem with that, I, and I don't know where it would come down. But frankly, that's between each employer and the employee. So, you know, the, the, at the end of the day, that's the conservative position on this is freedom, liberty, free association, states Well, you rights. know, uh, today, generation, for example, in my family, I was, I was surprised, but to learn that m nephews of mine were Ron Paul uh, supporters. We haven't got into that and, yet. And others, uh, yeah. uh, Republican uh, supporting candidates. Mm -hmm. The reason well, I'm saying is that because now that the Republicans uh, find themselves in the situation, the more you go into these communities, you'll find that you do have supporters out there, Yeah. but no one from the party has ever gone into the into those areas? Well, uh, and, to and and we need we absolutely need to do that. Now, the one thing I can tell you, as far as the drug situation goes, <coughs> I know that we have spent way too much money and destroyed way too many families mm -hmm. enforcing stuff in a way that was very counterproductive. We we have destroyed entire neighborhoods, broken apart families, put husbands and fathers in jail. That is not, not good for society not good you know it's not good for those families it's not good for those neighborhoods and it's not good for our society as a whole right <clears throat> and so i i very much would like to see that stop very much uh, i hope it does bit, and actually I, you know i think it's kind of like the uh, i'm going to date myself but the old saying that only nixon could go to china right when when you know it was communist china and you had, you know, this very, um, you know, before he did all sorts of bad things, you know, very staunch <laughs> conservative, right? He was the one who could afford to do the outreach to China because he had such a staunch conservative relation, reputation, right? That's true. I firmly believe, I actually spoke um, uh, at the last session. I went, we to a couple of, minutes, so. I went to a couple of conservative legislators and said, you know, we're the ones who can and should be saying this current law enforcement paradigm that we're implementing has really bad effects for the state, really bad effects for society, really bad effects for neighborhoods. We need to stop this. And we can. We're the ones who can. We should be able to do this. And what a great way to start reach, reach out, right? And what a great way to build relationships, to walk, to walk into a neighborhood and go, okay, let's talk. Let's, let's find out. The, you know, this, is cl this is clearly not working. What we're doing right now is yeah. clearly not working. Especially in this county. You would think people would wake up and open their eyes, you know, because like I said earlier, you know, you're putting the same people in office and we're getting the same results. You know, we still have traffic is just terrible on I-35 in this city. We've done nothing to do it, but we're getting ready to spend millions, millions, hundreds of millions of dollars to put bike lanes you know, that people are not going to take. They're also putting money into public transportation, and then now they're cutting down some of the routes. You yeah, know? the, and, the and express, I don't know. Uh, express bus right. lanes are actually cutting away r lanes of the road. And they have, you have, so, many people, you have so many people on a bus, you know, that people just get off the bus because there's no place for them to stand on the bus. And they've, you know, they've eliminated, you know, you know, one of the routes there. So, you know, you're, you're putting these people in the office that are making these decisions and doing these, some of these things, and you know they don't have your you know your your best interests at heart. I have allergies; it's killing me. <laughs> getting stop to answer. I'm getting more and more stop to answer. Your, your 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 term or role. What let's say one thing that during your term, what would you say <clears throat> you would like to have accomplished? Well, the the first thing I would like to have accomplished, and thankfully the legwork's already been done. The hard part's already been done to make it very likely this is going to happen. But I would like very much to see a significant increase in the number of elected Republicans in Travis County. And like I said, I don't expect to, to have a majority anytime really soon. This is a long game. This, this is going to be a long fight. Um, but 
to have, if we can double or triple the number of uh, elected officials in Travis County, and I firmly, I, I absolutely believe we can do double, and I think we can do triple given some time and the right candidates and the right races and done really well. If we can do that and just make the conversation more broad and more deep and, and more spread around the, the county, I think that will be a huge accomplishment. Well, one way to accomplish that, and, and, and I'll, I'll say it because our party doesn't do it, is by, because I've seen some good candidates in the Republican Party, Marilyn Jackson, uh, that you know ran, ran for against Eddie Rodriguez. Uh, but I think that one way that would be more convincing to our community uh, is that, you know, the party put in the dollars to market that one individual. You know, I think that it had Marilyn been given financial support, you know, like the 100000 or whatnot, you know. And Eddie Rodriguez had. Yeah, yeah he, she would have given Eddie Rodriguez a good, good race because uh, the only people, unfortunately, that knew that Marilyn Jackson was running were the Republicans, and there was only a handful. Right. You know, but had she been yeah, gi like given a, a marketing and, and, you know, your flyers, your door-to-door, -door, you know, because it's tough to raise funds in a, in a low-income community. Yep. Or, or ha you know, so I think that, you know, that's just free well, consulting advice. You know, well, no, you, and that, you that's what I'm saying. To, you, you have to accept breaking the practice of what was done before, and, and that is that this never had been done before. Oh, yeah. No, I'm, I'm a big fan of trying something new and testing a bunch of stuff. Uh, the, and that's what I was saying. We've got to find a way to really build a build an infrastructure where we've got full-time people dedicated right. to getting conservatives elected. And we're going to have to get pretty clever and we're going to have to get pretty creative and find a way to do that. Because you're right, it takes a lot of money. And you know, oh, yeah. it, you said it's hard to raise money in, in lower income neighborhoods. I can tell you it's hard to raise money everywhere. Oh, well, that, <laughs> it, that is, I know. it is absolutely hard to raise money, especially you know, the way we've been doing it. And I think we we're going to have to get very creative and find some better ways. Right, but but it can be done because at the state level you have, uh, you know, well, Commissioner Williams, you know, not an elected position, but uh, you know where still a good one to point at. And yeah, say, oh yeah, you know that could be but seen as a role model and, and people can feel comfortable. Yeah. Uh, in the uh, community. But this last, we don't get into the endorsements that were made by the, uh, one of the groups you're involved in. But I wanted to hear you, also your ideas on how to bring the uh, the uh, libertarian Ron Paul wing into the party with us. Uh, well, I, I think it's clearly you have a, any or yeah. Is there any? Or? <laughs> I, my experience. I know Michael been, wants to help too. Yeah, I mean, my experience has been just talking about first principles and sticking to what's important is is the easiest way to bring <coughs> as many of all stripes in. And frankly, we've got a lot in common with libertarians, right? right? I mean, right. a lot. Uh, and the, frust the only thing that really frustrates me is when you have a race that is really, really close between a truly conservative Republican and a not even close to anywhere conservative Democrat, and libertarians will throw five or six percent uh, that could have swung the race for the Republican. And instead, I, they'll, they'll I have, keep it I off the side. I stop you here just a minute. I have, well, I always pick up Tony Miller. I appreciate you because that's the one I had uh, the figures on. Uh, I forget his name. Camacho, a Loran Libertarian, and he took like 7,000 votes. Toby Miller lost by 3,000 votes. Yep. And he was a good libertari uh, liberty uh, constable there with uh, Precinct 2. Yeah. And, and had he won that position, not only... Not only would he have run it much more in line with libertarian instincts, but that district would not have been redrawn. And that re district being redrawn is going to change things for a while. All right, go, Bob. What happened to the Broncos? <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, three minutes. I have a lot, I have a lot of friends who uh, were rooting for them, and they, they all agreed that... Uh, they were all at Mountain High. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they agreed that. I just had that to throw that out there. Sorry, Katie. 
clear, clearly the you. clearly the product in Colorado must be stronger than the product in Seattle. That's Four what happens when you <laughs> see. That's what happens when you legalize weed. Broncos lose. <laughs> well, they got it in, well, in Seattle. <laughs> they got it in Seattle too. That's why I said clearly the product in Colorado must be stronger must be than the air the air. Mile high or something. They do some pretty good stuff there. <laughs> Anyway, the last yeah. two minutes here, we go up and it says 15, But se but seriously, not only you know, I, I want people to get out and vote. It's not that's not just the only thing that's important, but it's important that you educate yourself on the <laughs> you know the people that are running for office. Absolutely. You know, know some of these people and know what's going on. Get out and, and you know and really figure it out because you have this. I, we got to stop putting the same people back into office. Well, and on statewide races, the 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 primaries next month will determine the state leaders for the next 10 years. So please talk to your precinct chair, get perspective on each of these races, make an informed vote. Yeah. Well, on the, uh, uh, well, we got a minute. I don't know what to do about the libertarian side. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say today was the last day. The, to the, if you're not registered to vote by midnight, you ain't, you ain't <laughs> voting. You're register in March. Yeah. Oh, 30 seconds. Anyway, folks, we'll be back next week. And we can argue some more some other time about libertarians and all that. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, we'll we'll all come together because the Libertarian Party, the Republican Party, agree more on things than they disagree. Absolutely. So hopefully, we'll be able to come together and move forward in Travis County so and do your great things. Republican, right? Which, Which one? Uh, uh, Whipperfee. Rodney Reefersee. I'd have lost Rodney Reefersee's contact info. We'd have him come on. Talk. Yeah, I know you got to have some good stuff. Uh, anyway, we'll see you next week. <laughs> we'll see you next week, Mike McNamara.